I just, you know. But it's just, to me, I felt like, this is a revelation I had this morning that it's going to be amazing. To me, I felt like I was representing one side and the other as the Harvest Vineyard Church. I could not do that. I could not represent both sides by going. And I felt really convicted by that. Danelle, on the other hand, and this is why I love her, I don't care. I'm going to do what Jesus tells me. I'm representing him. And that's where I made the mistake. I didn't represent Jesus. I represented man. And that's my fault. And I, I felt for that, I caused this, and initially caused this division, because I didn't represent Jesus. Because Jesus sat with the sinner and ate with them and loved them through their sin. He sat at the bar and drank with them. He didn't drink, maybe. I don't know. He didn't say. But he sat there with the prostitute and let them sin, and he loved them the whole way. And are we supposed to be like Jesus? I screwed up. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. It's my revelation this morning. I should have been there for you. I love you. I'm glad you're here. That's my fault. Now on to yours. Well, hit the lead. What about? <laughs> what about your? I'm getting there. Okay. We got like a half hour here. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I feel like what's happened through this, um, as God always does, is He can take ugly things and like do beautiful things out of it. Um, and so I feel like even the people who feel like our decision was wrong are digging deeper into the word, right? All sides are digging deeper. What does God really say? What is my personal conviction? How do I want to live this out? And so I still think the fruit of this, while it's uncomfortable and we've had you know, we've got some people who aren't going to come back and call this their home church any longer. Um, it's still been fruitful in a positive way. So as I've gone back and looked at what was the original, what did God give us vision for this community? And it was a place where we love God and we love people and we have always said it's a place for messy people. This is the hospital. We don't want people to come here who think they've got it all together. I think Jesus even said something like that. Like, I didn't come for everybody who's fixed and, well, I'm not here for the doctors. I'm here for the sinners. I'm here for the broken. And so we felt like when we planted this church, we were here specifically for people who had been outcast from church. Um, I had kind of envisioned it as myself, a preacher's kid who I left church on purpose because I couldn't stand all of the kind of politics and drama that happened behind it. And so that sent me people speaking the truth to me in love, but without actually loving me, drove me farther away from the church. And so we've wanted to create a space where we can come and let God do his job. I don't need to make you do the right or wrong thing. I can present you the truth. I can present you, but I feel like our job, and it says this on our original website and Facebook page, is to create a space where everyday people can come in and encounter Jesus. So we say, come as you are and you'll be loved. The invitation is to leave changed and transformed, but that's not my job. That's not the pastor's job. Now, does that mean like if you're, if we see you doing something inappropriate, are we going to have a conversation with you? If I, if I see, you know, your wife tells me that you're doing something inappropriate, or I can tell you're flirting maybe with somebody too much, I'm going to have a conversation with you. I'm, it's not saying that we aren't going to ever have any correction, um, but it's also saying that I can't be responsible for your decisions within your life. And so um, that was the aha moment that I had yesterday, was that this evangelical mindset of presenting you with this turn or burn mentality is what has sent so many of us fleeing from the church. And so we can't get closer to God if we aren't in this community. 
So we have to have some uh, openness and some willingness to be a little messy, to let people fall down on their own and find God in the process and try not to judge that. And so, you know, one of the arguments that Johnny and I would have whenever this issue would come up, because Johnny uh, likes to play devil's advocate in conversations sometimes. I'm sure that's shocking to all of you. But he likes to be like, well, what if, you know, the sky actually was green and your lens is just, what? anyways. So as we were having this conversation, I just forgot what I was going to say. It was probably really good, though. I got a story on that. If you Go want. for it. All right. So I'm going to tell you a story about Bill and Mary. Uh, this is something I, huh? So Bill and Mary live out in this rural community, and they got new neighbors. Um, and then one morning, they were sitting down eating breakfast, and Mary looks out the window and sees her new neighbors hanging up laundry on the, lo- on the clothesline. And he goes, man, our neighbors really don't know how to clean laundry. You know, they got kind of dirty. So... You know, this goes on for a while, and what's that? Oh, it's <laughs> so this goes on for a while, and I didn't know you needed the pen. I'm sorry. I was off. My, I was. I was off, still on. I was on Bill and Mary. I still don't want to. Now, where was I? Okay. So this goes on for a while, and one morning, you know, she says, Mary looks out the window, and goes, "Wow, she must learn how to clean laundry," and uh, Bill says, it's funny, I think I have an answer for that. And she goes, well, how did she learn how to clean laundry? She goes, well, I got up this morning really early and went out and washed our windows. <laughs> so basically, what windows are we looking out of? Is it a clean? So that's basically what you're trying to say. Yeah, and so one of the devil's advocate things Johnny always does is he says, okay, so so if, if we're going to be loving somebody in their sin, what about the alcoholic? And so question comes up in conversation. An alcoholic needs you to take him to the liquor store. He's not asking for your money. He's just asking for your transportation to the liquor store. Do you take him to the liquor store? There's a large percent of the evangelical church that would say, Oh, absolutely not. I am not going to take the alcoholic to the liquor store. Well, guess what this church did? We took the alcoholic to the liquor store because guess what it gave us? Time, conversation, relationship. And so we were able to say, you know this is destroying your life. You know that this has no healthy fruit in your life. And so... It wasn't like an abused thing, you know, there were times where we said, no, we aren't, you know, we're not waking up and leaving our house to take you, you know, like, so there were boundaries, but we were still able to use without just condemning and saying, you know, you're a terrible person, you're having all these alcohol problems or, you know, so we were able to use that as a ministry um, until he eventually did go to rehab and then, like, we aren't God, so it's not fixed, but... But anyways, it was just an example of how it's a little different. We're willing to love a little bit into that uncomfortable place because we're not God. We're not making those changes in you. We just want a chance to show God to you. Be God. Yeah. I know... A couple of the things that people have challenged me with this week is, do I believe in the Bible? I do. I do believe it. I do read it. I do um, study it. I do think a lot about it. I do believe God created male and female, and that was his best intention. Um, That's why it's the requirement for reproduction. And I do obviously, I mean, I guess it's not obviously, believe those things. Um, and I used the opportunity, other people were like, I can't believe you took your kids. I'm like, well, I can't, I can't pretend like we don't live in the world that we live in. And so I, again, another example, I feel like it's better to walk alongside. And so Bo and I went for a walk that day and we had a conversation and I said, Hey, there's a wedding today. And he was like, Oh yeah. I said, yeah, 
Brandy and Brittany are getting married. And he was like, two girls? It's kind of weird. And I was like, yeah, you know, we think that God created male and female, and that's his design. But since the fall, some people are born certain ways, and some people are created other ways because of their trauma and experiences. And so we took the time to memorize the Bible, didn't we, Bo? All these words. We memorized all these words. Can you come tell everybody what the entire, you memorized every single thing in the Bible. Love God, love others. Love God, love others. Good job, Bo. That's all we got to know how to do. I mean, if we can't just do that, then why is, with all the, all the other rules, I just want to love others and love God. That's hard. So, um, I'm going to go on a little, you take a breather for a second. You know, sit here, since you do all the talking. I want to talk about actions without words. So, we have actions without words. We perceived this marriage, what Danelle participated in without words as a not a good act to represent our church. That's what we perceived. Okay, let's look at Jesus without words, without any dialogue. Let's go through any of the Gospels and look at the narration, not the, not the dialogue that between people. Jesus was born, you know, and this guy, this kid was born. He, you know, did some stuff, and then he, he was a kid or whatever. He was a carpenter or whatever. But let's get to the... I'm not, I could take all day a whole sermon on this. But, all right, he went to this place where this one guy named John the Baptist, he was, he got, got ate bugs and weird stuff. He looked weird and got dunked in a water. And next thing you know, he went out in the desert and hung out with the devil. Well, that's odd. And then he, every time he goes to walk somebody, they just start, every time he goes by somebody, he talks to him and they start following him. And he does some weird stuff, and like he touches them, and people jump up and run around. And you know what? He went to a synagogue, a temple, a church, and flipped tables over. This guy has to be satanic. I've never seen him hang out with God like Moses did. In fact, I've seen him hang out with the devil, and whores, and prostitutes, and drunkards. He doesn't hang around with the holy people, the righteous. And this is your God. And this is what now demonstrated. I will go through the ends of the earth to love you. Just like Jesus loved us before we knew him. He loved us while we were sinners, while we're still sinners, and died for us because he loved us that much. Without words, Jesus doesn't look good. But with his words, there's a lot to learn. But first, we got to love like he did. So there you go. There's my tangent. There you go. So we can go into scripture, but it's like anything else. I can cherry pick scripture all day long. So like there some of the key scriptures that really stood out to me when I was studying this, Romans 2, 4 says it's God's kindness that leads to repentance. It's not, which is kind of interesting, right? Um, Romans 3.17, Jesus came to save, not to condemn. We can go through a whole list. Um, it, it's like the Bible app always knows what you're going through, right? Like every verse this week has been about love, 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 love. Yeah, today's is perfect. First John, what is it, 2.7 or something like that? I mean, I love it in the passion. It's 4.7. It's perfect, too. It, there are so many things. And so 1 Corinthians 8.1 says, Knowledge makes us feel important, but it's love that strengthens the church. Let me read it one more time. Knowledge makes us feel important, but it's love that strengthens the church. It's this knowledge and this demanding to be right that breaks churches and breaks denominations down. It's this, I have to have the right thing. The pastor has to have the right thing. Instead of allowing grace and love and people to be on their journey. So we want to create a space where people can come in holier than thou or as broken as can be and still find the same God. 
to walk on a journey with you. Be on, permission to be on your journey, to be processing whatever God is speaking to you so that we can have unity in the church. And it's not going to be through knowledge and like pushing. There, there, are, there is the hunt for the absolute truth becomes an idol. And we need the spirit of God to guide us. And we need community. And we need the word. And we need Holy Spirit. Just to touch on that. And this is going to hurt to some people. But sometimes we use this as the Holy Spirit. Well, this doesn't convict me. Nothing will, you know. The Holy Spirit job is to convict. Not the Bible. This is just instruction. This is basic instructions before leaving earth. Not Holy Spirit. It's God breathed. I agree. It's true written word of God. I believe that. But it was funny because I said I was reading the Bible and it convicted me, but the Holy Spirit never did. Yeah. That was what was weird. That's what brought me to think about that. But anyways, I want to read today's verse, the whole section about God is love to you really quick. And I'm going to let you wrap up your little yeah. shenanigans and let's just get crazy in worship. All right, God is love. It's First John 4, 7 through whatever the end of the chapter is. Those who are loved by God, let his love continually, continually pour from, from you to one another. Because why? God is love. Everyone who loves is fathered by God and experiences an intimate knowledge of him. Who, how many people have experienced that love from God? Just raise your hand. They'll never forget it. That's the gospel I want people to learn. Okay. That's what this church is here for. That's why we planted this church. That's why God sent us to the shore by this love. Those, the one who doesn't love has yet to know God, for God is love. The light of God's love shined within us when he sent his matchless son into the world so that we might live through him. So this is love. He loved us long before we loved him. Did we love the homosexuals long before they loved us? Man, we screwed up. All right. It was his love, not ours. It proved, he proved it by sending his son to be the pleasing sacrificial offering to take away our sins. Delightfully loved ones, if he loved us with such tremendous love, then loving one another should be our way of life. That's a lifestyle. No one has ever gazed upon the fullness of God's splendor. But if we love one another, God makes his permanent home in us, and we make our permanent home in him. Beautiful. And his love is brought to its, to its full expression in us. And that's what we're after, full expression of love. And that's the real Bible that's coming up. But anyways, I'll tell you about that in a minute. And he has given us his spirit within us so that we can have the assurance that he lives in us and that we live in him. Wow. He also gave, he died for us to take away our sins. Then he also gave us, he like loved us beyond. He like, okay, I'll take away your sins. You know what? I'll give you more. I'll give you a counselor, an advocate, a Holy Spirit. I'll give you my spirit. That's amazing. That's how much he loves us. Moreover, when we have seen with our own eyes and can testify to the truth that Father God has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world, those who give thanks that Jesus is the Son of God live in God and God lives in them. So when, if you ever come across somebody who you feel like is demonic or something, ask them if they believe who they think God is. And then ask, and they will tell you Jesus. And it's kind of hard for a demonic person to say Jesus. Anyways, we have come into an intimate experience with God's love, and we trust in the love he has for, it, for us. God is love. Those who are living in love are living in God, and God lives through them. By living in God, love has brought to its full expression in us so that we may fiercely face the day of judgment. Because all that Jesus now is, so are we in this world. Love never brings fear, for fear is always related to punishment. But love drives perfection. But love's perfection drives the fear of punishment far from our hearts. Whoever walks constantly 
Afraid of punishment has never reached love's perfection. That's good. And then it gets better. Our love for others is our grateful response to the love God first demonstrated to us. Share the love that God showed you. Anyone can say, I love God, yet have hatred toward another believer. This makes him a phony, because if you don't love a brother or sister whom you can see, how can you truly love God whom you can't see? For he has given this command, whoever loves God must also demonstrate love to others. So, we get it. The revival that's coming is going to be an outpouring of God's love. It's going to change the world. People are going to get saved by the love of God. People are going to change their lives because of the love of God. The lost will be found, and the found are going to experience the love of God like they never experienced before, and they're going to be saved. They thought they were saved until they felt the love of God. When you feel it, it changes your lives. Right, David? It changed your life. So, one more thing, and I'm off. <laughs> Yesterday, I was heading to a banquet gathering for training, and me and Hammond decided, let's ride our motorcycles. And we were taking a long country route there, just enjoying our day. At 7 o'clock in the morning, a semi out in the middle of the country decides to pull out in front of us. I locked him up. I wasn't scared. I wasn't having all the thoughts going through my head. What about my wife? What about my kids? I mean, I'm good with that, not the death thing. I'm, but the one thing that stuck in my mind, it was the funniest thing, because was, well, the people know that I loved them. And that really freaked me out. If I died yesterday, would you guys know that I loved you? Probably not. I mean, maybe for a minute. You'd be like, you probably were like, he was a funny dude, he has always comedy, but you were like, yeah, he actually loved me. You know, I mean, she knew if I had a TikTok post about me, it'd been funny. <laughs> no. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, I got terrible dad jokes. But that was like, I'd never demonstrated love like I should have. And that's what stuck out in my mind as I thought I was going to die. Wow. Is that what you're going to say when I, tomorrow when I'm dead? But, <laughs> oh. But he was serious one time. It was cool. <laughs> but I do love every one of you, and I would do anything for every one of you. And I know you would do that for me because you just demonstrated that to me. And I try. We're all human. We all fail. And I, should I have one? I have one more quote. Try to see like a ministry time. One more quote. Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton. Which I thought it was hilarious because this wedding took place in Dolly Parton country. So it's, it's even it's, it gets, it's just it's funny. Dolly Parton said, if you want to see a rainbow, you gotta go through the rain. So there's a lot of fruits gonna come out of this. A lot of fruit if we keep pushing. There's going to be a lot of fruit. We just got to look for it. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. The last thing I have to share is from Acts 10. And so um, in Acts 10, Peter is, so this is obviously Jesus has died, resurrected. The church is trying to learn how to be a church, learn how to disciple Jesus to people. And Peter is has a vision and it's all of these unclean things and he's like lord i have never i've never eaten from anything unclean like i would never eat anything off of that and god says to him don't call something unclean if god has made it clean and this vision kept happening and kept happening and peter is like why is god keep showing me these unclean things and so then all of a sudden these gentiles show up if you remember, the Jews think the Gentiles are as unclean as it gets. And so Peter, instead of 
judging them and sending them away so they can never find Jesus, he instead realizes the vision was to show him, and he says, God has shown me that I can no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean, so I've come without objection to see what you've called me for. And they were calling him to ask him about Jesus, and that they wanted to understand because they were, they, were, they were trying to follow Jesus, but they didn't have the Holy Spirit yet. And so they were trying to figure out how to follow. And so Peter realizes, I see clearly now that God doesn't show favoritism, that there is peace with God through Jesus, and it's available for all. And as he's saying these things, Holy Spirit fell on the Gentiles. These people wouldn't have had that. So after Holy Spirit falls on them, Peter is amazed that these Holy Spirit can be poured out even on these people he had deemed too unclean to even bother ministering to until God opened his eyes and said, how dare you call something unclean? that I call clean. you're going to have to show us how to live this out. Help us to be a model for what it looks like to deliver your messy grace. It breaks our boxes. It breaks our stereotypes. People we say aren't fit enough to receive it are already full of it. Help us to see with lenses that mirror yours. Help us get past this desire to be right and just give us permission to walk alongside. your presence out. Let your message of love and unity flow from here like sticky honey. And every person who walks by or drives by or walks in this place gets the sticky love in messy grace that you offer on their shoes. And they take that. They take that deposit from you. 
out of this building where we gather so that we can go be you to the world around us. This sticky grace, this sticky love, just we can't get it off. It's just on our hands, it's on our fingers. Everything we touch becomes contaminated by your love and your grace. stops. We can't get it off. And that sticky grace, that sticky love, the righteous think it feels disgusting and they can't carry it well in the world. It's too sticky. It's too gross. It's too messy. I can't. Help us to steward that, to embrace this sticky love, this messy grace that covers each of our lives. I don't want to abuse your 
your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Your forgiveness. Oh, it's like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. It's like the sound of a symphony to my ears. It's like holy.
I want to see you.
we can't get a grip on your reckless love like it doesn't make sense. I can't earn it. I didn't deserve it. But you said I did. In the eye of every other man down here, I don't deserve it. But in God's eyes, I do. It's reckless. We're all just pieces of crap, aren't we? <laughs> what? Yep. So, you can go ahead and sit down. Um, I want you to do ministry time notes. Don't go anywhere. I want to do announcements. It's kind of a weird spot to do it, but we were going to do it at first. I was like, well, everybody forget because it's a dramatic day. So, a couple of announcements. Our Craig Miller conference, we're going to cancel that due for unforeseen circumstances. Um, so mark that off your calendar and put in Holy Spirit night for Sunday night instead. Aha, we're going to have, yeah, Sunday night, the 29th, I think, we're going to have a Holy Spirit night. We're just going to worship the crap out of God and, or the crap out of us. But either way, we're worshiping. Um, so we're going to do that. And uh, one more announcement. we got a community service opportunity here in Martinsville. And I want you to, everybody wants to do that. It's like landscaping kind of stuff. We're cutting down some shrubs and um, some weeds and stuff like that. What? Yeah. You don't even know about it, do you? See? That's how I announce. I'm breaking news. We're doing community service. What? We do that? So meet in there by the couch after church. And we will discuss that, make a plan, and we're going to take action. And we're going to love our community. So... Yeah, it's for an elderly lady who can't afford to have a stunt, so. All right. It's all to you now. <clears throat> oh, God, you're getting serious. Hey, give one to Hammond. <laughs> he likes, give me that one. It's a sharp one. <laughs> Who's your God? Who's my God? God? Why? What's his name? Yahweh? Yeah. Who's, who's his son? Jesus? Who's Jesus? Jesus? Okay. Just want to make sure you're not demonic. I learned that today in church. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. You got plenty of neat little rocks. Here you go. I meant to start with it in my backpack. Because I want to go, again, above and beyond. The boldness and courage it takes for you guys to come to church, any church, is amazing. And it's beautiful because I think majority of us, if we walked in here and were immediately labeled by what other people were condemning us with, I wouldn't come to church. If I woke up and I had this Sharpie written across my forehead that had this sin that pulls me back in or can trip me up, I don't think I could do it. So there's a pretty powerful story in the Bible about a woman who's about to be stoned because of her sin. And it's so easy to stone people on Facebook, isn't it? It's so easy to stone people. Now, I think even in real life, if Jesus hadn't been there, I'd have a hard, hard time throwing the first stone. But maybe if I was in that time and that was just what you did, and if you got mad enough and somebody did something bad enough, you just threw rocks at them, I don't know. I can't, I can't go there mentally. But the point of the story is, in the presence of Jesus, if Jesus says to you, are you worthy enough to throw this stone at your brother or sister? Is there anybody willing 
to pick up the stone. No, but we do it all the time. Would we do it, though, if Jesus was standing there before us? Now, the evangelical church loves to grab that line right after that, where he said, well, go and sin no more. So he did still boss her around and tell her what to do. But he's Jesus, okay? Like, he's allowed to be the one to convict us of what we should and shouldn't do. Let's go ahead and do, I feel, I feel so like at a Billy Graham crusade, but every, every head bowed, every eyes closed. Whether you do this in the physical or you just do it in your mind or in your heart, it's, it's between you and God. God is after your heart. Your actions follow. And your actions still aren't going to live up to the holiness standard. We can keep trying. We should keep trying. That's where we're trying to go. But he's after your heart. He is after you knowing that you stand before him righteous and redeemed and living from that place of identity. So either put your hands out in front of you like you're going to receive a gift or in your mind or in your spirit if you agree. We're just going to pray for God to give us this deposit of love. So God, we're here. You know our heart. We ask you to grow it in size like you did the Gringes. God, we pray that as a community, we can grow together, we can walk together, we can have hard conversations with one another and still know that we're serving you. God, break our heart for what breaks yours. Show us how to live like you've loved me. Yes, we carry the kingdom, and yes, we want to bring the kingdom, and we want to break the chains, but your gospel is love, and your law is peace. You are the one who breaks the chains of the slaves who are our brothers. You do that, God. So God, I pray you just dump that sticky, messy honey all over each person who's postured here to receive it. God, that they just carry your love and your grace and your mercy and it just multiplies. The more people they touch, the more it drips off of their fingers. That they delight in it that they find joy in it. We pray for an outpouring of this love, this radical shift, this shift in the entire world that's going to change the ripple effect from this tiny little moment where we come together and say, yes, God. We see what you're doing. We see your revival of love. We see you breaking down churches and denominations across the world so that we can be fired and refined for the purpose you've sent us here, to love as you have first loved us. Help us to walk it out.
heal our resistance to your to being submitted to you. Help us to walk alongside each other. this for our children, for the generations to be shaken with your reckless love. If this brings up more questions or whatever, <laughs> ask Johnny. <laughs> no, let us know. We're open to conversations um, and being challenged. So we love you guys. <laughs>